Okay, today we're talking about identifying pairs of lines and angles. Okay, so we're going to talk about lines, planes, rays, and we're going to talk about whether they intersect, don't intersect because they're parallel or skew. So we're going to start off with the first term here, parallel, which means that two planers, uh, two coplanar lines that do not intersect. Okay, and so when we talk about two coplanar lines that do not intersect, what we're saying is, is that if we take a plane here, and so let's just draw a whole little box. Okay, take a box here. We'll even put in the background here so we can have. So what we can see here, we have six planes here. And now if I draw a line, there's one line, there's two lines, and this is N and this is M, we would say line M is parallel to line N. M is parallel to line N. Okay, so this is a notation thing. When we have these two vertical lines, that means parallel. Okay, so that's a vocab piece that you're gonna really have to make sure you have because you'll see that all over the place um, in, in embedded in problems. Okay, so the parallel postulate. Now, for those of you who don't know, a postulate is a statement that we assume to be true without proof. So we accept it, we assume that it's true, and we can't prove it. Okay, so for those of you in a math class that you prove things, we're not going to prove this. We just assume that it's true. Generally, postulates are going to make sense for us. So let's take a look at what this one says. This one says that if there is a line and a point that is not on that line, then there is exactly one line through that point, through that point, that is parallel to that line. It's parallel to the given line. Okay. So, if we look here, what we're saying is, is that we could draw a line through this point that is parallel, just like this. And there's only one. There's no other line that we could draw. Okay, here's another notation thing. See these two little marks on here? We put marks here and here. Those two things are going to indicate that the lines are parallel. So this means the lines are parallel. And remember, we could shorthand that because parallel, we know we could say just those two little lines. Okay, so we have some shorthands for parallel. Those two little arrows on a diagram tell you that the lines are parallel and the two vertical lines in an expression tell you that whatever you're talking about is parallel. We talked about the parallel postulate, which says that if you have a point that's not on a line, you can draw one line that's going to be parallel to it. All right, so let's keep going. We have a different term. It's called skew. Skew is when we have two non-coplanar lines that do not intersect. Okay, so what that looks like here is if we take a vertical line on this edge of the box and a horizontal or diagonal line on this side of the box, these lines are never going to meet, but they're not parallel because they're not in the same plane. They're not running in the same direction. So we would say line N is skew to line M. Not lime, but line. There we go. All right, keep going on. We have a, now we're going to talk about some intersections. The first one that we're going to talk about is perpendicular. So perpendicular is when we have two, uh, sorry, when two lines intersect at a 90 degree or right angle. Okay, so we have a symbol for this. Okay, like learning a new language, right guys? So. We have perpendicular, that's that upside down T, that's the symbol. And visually what this is going to look like is if you have two lines, they're going to meet at a right angle, and hopefully you already know 
that when we put this little square in the corner there, that makes this a right angle. And so if we come in here and we go, this is M, this is N, we could say that line M is perpendicular to line N, okay? Let's keep moving on. Perpendicular postulate, again, we're gonna assume that this is true without proof. We start off by saying, if there is a line and a point that's not on that line, so given that picture on the left, then there's exactly one line through that point, through that point, that is perpendicular. Perpendicular, okay? Using the symbol, upside down T, again, Perpendicular is a long word to spell, so let's shorthand it to the given line. So again, very similar to the parallel postulate, what this is saying is, is that if I go ahead and draw a line that is perpendicular to the first line through that point, perpendicular, it gotta be at a right angle, there's only one, there's no other line that I could draw through that point that would be perpendicular to that first line, okay? So that's the perpendicular postulate. Hopefully this is making sense. Uh, leave a comment or ask a question and we'll keep moving forward. All right, so we've got some more vocab pieces here. A transversal. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar line. Uh, two or more coplanar lines. So what that means is over here on this picture, we have two lines here. We have line one and line two. T is crossing both of those lines, lines one and line two. So line T is the transversal, okay? And so it makes eight different angles when we have two lines cut by a transversal. And so what we're gonna see is that we're gonna have lots of vocab associated with those angles as we describe them. All right, so let's talk about these angles here. So an alternate interior angle is going to be on the inside. Okay, so right here's the inside. Inside of the double lines. And they're gonna be on the opposite. Opposite sides. So when we talk about the transversal, we're looking at the opposite sides, meaning alternating sides of the transversal. So for example, we would say that angle four and angle six are alternate interior angles. Angles three and angles five are alternate interior angles, okay? So we have two pairs of alternate interior angles Exterior angles or alternate exterior angles are going to be on the outside of the double. And so here's the outside, outside, outside of the double lines. And they're going to be on opposite sides of the transversal. So in this case, we would talk about angle one and angle seven. And then we'd also talk about angle two and angle eight, all right? We also have some corresponding angles. So if we look at corresponding angles, those are going to be one on the outside and one on the inside. The other one's on the inside. And they're both gonna be on the same side of the transversal. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples here. We would have angle one and angle five. Those would be corresponding. We would have angle two and angle six. Those would be corresponding. We'd have angle three and seven, angle seven. And then finally, we would have angle four and angle eight. So Corresponding angles are gonna kind of form an F. If you visually looked at like making an F shape, four and eight you can see make this F shape here. And so that's corresponding. All right, the last term here that we're gonna talk about is consecutive same side interior. So consecutive same side interior are gonna be on the inside 
inside of the double lines and they're going to be on the same side of the transversal. And so examples here would be angle 3 and angle 6, also angle 4 and angle 5. There we go. There's our examples. There's our terms. We should be good to go.